most of the tips and tricks me and my man Davidas give out are about hairstyles and just being manly gentlemen of the modern age. But every now and then, people ask for guitar tips and tricks. <laughs> That's correct. So uh, in this video, we're going to do something completely different. And we're going to tell you a uh, insert a prime number <laughs> of guitar secret knowledge. It's got to be prime. That's, I, don't, I don't remember even number tips. Yeah, me neither. Only prime. Mm -hmm. That professional guitarists don't want you to know about, and they don't no. tell you about it. No, they've got. We're, we're actually. We may be kicked out of the guitar guild for revealing some of these secrets. You're right. Just like the magicians, they're not supposed to reveal secrets, you know. And yeah, if they do, no, they get kicked this, out. This is us. So this is literally the, the secret knowledge, and we have like a number of tips prepared for you. Yep. So just prepare. To have your brains blown out. Uh, and you better be grateful because we're throwing away our careers to help you, the common man or woman at home. Yeah, well, basically, we'll never get a gig at Disney again. Nope, never again. Hit us with the first tip. First tip that every, every professional playing guitarist, touring guitarist, improvising guitarist should know is to be able to play a scale starting with any finger. Like, what does that mean? So most people think you start a scale and you start at the beginning and this index finger is number one and this is where you start and you mm -hmm. start on the thickest string, a sixth string, or if you're playing a seventh, you know, you play seven guitar, seven string guitar, you start on the seventh. Right. Right. So that's kind of like, yeah, I get it. That's where you start. But it becomes really limiting because your point of view is locked to that perception and you would actually unlock more positions and more shapes if you learned to play it from any finger. So what what I mean? Let's take a, let's take a G major. Okay. Let's people's see key. The people's key. And let's do a scale starting at an in index finger with three notes per string. Mm. That's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. Is that the only way to do it? That's not the only way to mm -hmm. do it. What, what if you want to start with your uh, second index finger, which is the middle finger? <laughs> what? You got two of them? Yes, those are two. You didn't know that? No. This is the London greeting. Yeah. That's... Oh, what do we have? We, oh, we have a Locrian. Extended. Went one backwards. We there went, we yeah, one backwards. So now you are in a more versatile playing position because you can start and play from anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. l l l l let me move up the neck a little bit and let's do like a C major on the from the sixth string. Three notes per string starting with index finger. Now what happens if we take this scale and we start with a pinky? No. Oh. We start with a pinky. Mm -hmm. On the C. We have A minor. There we we have A minor scale. Once you start seeing this, all the positions stop becoming positions and they become a fluid construct of seeing the fretboard, I guess, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So every, every performing touring guitarist, session guitarist, they know the secret, and they don't want you to know about it. Nope, but here we are, spilling it. <laughs> Sean, hit us with the next one. All right, so most of his tips and tricks are going to be about being technically awesome and amazing. <laughs> most of mine are going to be about how to cover your mistakes <laughs> when you're playing live. All right, so for example, let's say we got a chord progression. G to D to B minor. What's that fourth chord? Oh, there it is. Back to G. Then, in the time that I bought to think about it, I remembered it was an A. Okay? So, buying yourself time to remember what you're supposed to already know is a great tip. The way to do that, stay in time. Never lose time. Never. The active picking hand. Just muting. Just hold the strings. You can just do this. Sometimes I've done this for entire sets. <laughs> right? <laughs> And then after the gig, I remember what I was supposed to play. Now, the kind of supplemental tip that goes with that, it's like, all right, let's say I got I'm gonna skip over that part. I should have known that's an A7. But I'm gonna actually. Oh, slide! <laughs> <Yep>. Slide! <laughs> the slide. 
Mm. Just put your finger anywhere and slide back. Mm -hmm. And if you do it fast enough and with intention, people won't know where you were supposed to start or end that slide, but you always end up home. Kind of a, a, a close cousin to this tip. Same thing. Anytime you see a musician do this, anytime without exception. They're not building suspense. No, 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 no. They're trying to remember what is actually supposed to go in that spot. You just leave space, you just keep the beating, and then you end up right back where you started, buying your brain time to recalibrate the gig. And that is my tip to you. That is brilliant. Thank you very much. You, use that. you ever use that one? I use a different one <laughs> for the same problem. Yeah. Modern problems require modern solutions. Oh, do they? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, other guitarists that I know and, you know, talk to, they use this one too. So let's say there's a chord progression for the sake of the argument in the key of C major. Okay. So now Sean's going to play whatever chord progression in the C major. I don't know the chord progression, but is a, there's a particular chord shape that's sort of like an empty chord, which only consists of the fifths and octaves. And almost every single chord will fit into that progression. So you can uh, work yourself out of the problem with this particular shape. What is this chord? Does it matter? Sounded good. It just works. He's playing every chord in the C major. chord is it seems like a neutral neutral chord it's just fifths and octaves i take my index finger on the fourth string fifth fret basically this is a g then the same index finger presses down a uh, third string also on the fifth fret which which is c and then my pinky octaves them up I'm learning so much. Another way that you can add, and the professional guitarists, touring musicians, and improvisers don't want you to know, mm -mm, mm -mm. you can add this shape is closely related to a pentatonic, minor pentatonic shape. Mm -hmm. So now, stop through it. So yeah. let's say this could be your one, this could be your. Uh, your your tonic chord. This could be your dominant chord, and we're not going to get into much that. That's going to be the next tip. Mm -hmm. But basically, this blank shape of a chord, just it's it's the same notes as a power chord, but it's higher up. And because its notes are in the higher register, the lower harmony, such as rhythm guitar, that's actually doing different power chords that are constantly changing, as well as the bass guitar. Mm -hmm. Because you're placing yourself in the higher register, you can get away. Right. It just kind of blends in really well with the lower rhythmic stuff. Kind of, to, to make it easier for you to remember, you can call it the U2 chord. Like, with or without you, okay? So... And the only thing that's changing in that song is the bass line. Extremely useful. Yes. Getting all the credit. <laughs> That's messed up. Yeah, just like, just like Bono didn't get any credit. Uh, anyways, if you'd like to learn how to add these flourishes in a more extensive, expansive way, how yep. could you do? How could you do this? Before we jump into the next tip that pro guitarists don't want you to no, know, no. and they won't tell you, we have something to tell you. Yeah. In the description below, there's a link to a course that Sean and I have made. It's to how to solo on the guitar like a pro. And for a limited time, yeah. mm -hmm. you get a great value for a discount. Amazing it's discount. Over three hour it's footage. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's going to help us out because by revealing these tips to you, we will be shunned from the musical community yeah. and lose most of our livelihood. You're going to have to pick up the heavy lifting. So yeah. just, just do this one solid for us. <laughs> it's not going to kill you. You know what I mean? How to solo in the guitar like ah. a pro. That's oh, amazing. There's a... 
What's the discount? It's like 40% off. 40% off. What? Are Link in the me? description. Yeah. Now. It's messed up. Today. I know. Basically, we, we're giving it away, basically. Yeah. 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 You're welcome. But how about another tip? Next tip! All right. So, this is one that I can't stress importantly enough. I perform with a lot of singers, a lot of different singers okay. sometimes. You need to be ready to change to any part of any song at any moment's notice. Doesn't matter how many times you rehearse, how many times you know it's two verses, then a chorus, then a bridge, then two verses. The singer will invariably arrange their own composition of how the structure is supposed to happen on the spot. So while I realize this may run contrary to my first tip, in which I was the one that forgot what I was doing, <laughs> during the changes between sections, that's when you need to be hyper aware. Yeah. You can take time off during a chord progression that's being repeated, but... Once you know you're going to the change, you definitely need to understand. Be like, all right, I thought this was going to be a chorus, but get that slide, slide into the first chord because we're back in the verse, people. <laughs> you need to be able to do that at a moment's notice. This happens all the time. It happened to me last week, actually. And another way to counteract this is actually our next tip. Next tip that professional guitarists don't want you to know and they won't tell you. Nope. It's communication within the band. Mm -hmm. Just like a professional football team or a baseball team has a sick, like secret hand gestures that mean something that other people uh, in the opposing team don't know the meaning of. Mm -hmm. The same in, in the band of working musicians. However, there's this one thing that's a little bit easier. It doesn't really vary from band to band. Usually the same body language or gesture signals mean the same thing yes and it's important for you to to familiarize with those like sean was telling me earlier he had a singer nod to him so the nod occurred let mm -hmm. me tell you the, the tale of the nod mm -hmm. all right we were in the bridge of a song so we'd not really rehearsed before mm -hmm. and then i'm like okay is, are we staying in the bridge or are we going back to the chorus so i looked at her and she nodded to me so i switched to the chorus she thought the nod meant to stay on the bridge. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. You need to watch this video because the nod or the intense stare, mm -hmm. which is kind of the same as a nod, right? That means it's time to go to the next thing or time to, to ramp up the end of a song yeah. generally, right? Yeah. Or your turn or whatever. But yeah, the nod, the nod doesn't mean stay right here. Stay right here is big eyes. Stay. <laughs> Probably the most universal, the most wildly, wild, wildly, whatever. The most used is this. You know what that means? That means it's the end of the song. This is the last note. Do you know how many times I've done this at the jam session filled with beginners? And they think it's like, oh, let's increase the intensity and let's keep going on this jam. It's like... That does not mean that. That means the end. I always thought that meant bass solo. <laughs> You're telling me? I didn't know that. This is news to me. We didn't go over this one before. Bass solo. No. It's you not. know what? Bringing it back to sport ball for a second. When I was in Little League, I thought take a pitch. You know what take a pitch means? No. We had, we had a signal that meant to take a pitch, right? So, like, if you have... Three balls and no strikes. You're one ball away from getting it. You take the pitch, which means you just let it go by. You do not swing under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. I thought take the pitch means meant take it. Take it. Yeah. Like take what's yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so every time I was 3-0 on a count, my coach would always be like, take it. And I'm like, smart. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, would, they would never expect me to swing at a wildly <laughs> unsteady wow. pitcher. So for the longest time, I just swung wildly at whatever pitch was coming on 3-0. And then one, one day he was like, you know what take a pitch means? Didn't, didn't know. Wow. Take a pitch means don't swing. Just like this doesn't mean bass solo. No. But now I know. Thank you for that, for that great tip. You're welcome. All right. Next secret tip. No one knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows this one. They don't want you to know no, about it. They don't want you to but know about it. But we're telling you. Chord scales. Chord, what is a chord scale, Sean? You've heard of the scale, G major scale. We talked about it before. Those are just single notes. What are you going to do with that? Nothing. Are you going to write a song with those single puny notes? No. Chords are what songs are built from. They work just like a regular scale, right? No, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Chord scale. Right? 
once you see chords as a scale, and see, I did this with, with bar chords, you yeah. don't have to bar them, but at least think of the shapes, right? Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, half diminished if you're saucy, yeah, and then back to major, mm -hmm. right? Once I have this pattern that never changes, very, you know, not a lot of songs really do key changes and stuff like that. This, everything fits inside this chord scale. That's just G. Yep. Key of A. Start on A. Then where we go, we get that chord scale. Once you have a chord scale down, songs become infinitely easier to remember. Because you don't have to, like, memorize, like, G, then C, then 2D, then mm -hmm, E minor, mm -hmm. then blah, 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 blah. Everything gets simplified. Yep. So you have to learn your chord scales. More than you even have to learn your regular scales, I think. Yeah. Chord scales should actually probably come first because once you can organize that information, it's all a lot easier. Definitely. It's Definitely. Tip. But they don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that. No. Mm -hmm. They won't tell you that. No, they won't tell you that. We will. Yeah. You're welcome. Can we tell them how you can maybe organize that to, to think of those chords in a mem memorable way? Next tip. <laughs> this is some secret wizarding knowledge here. This is very advanced magic. Yeah, exactly. This is chamber secret stuff. Nashville number system. Mm, Nashville. The good people of Nashville. They've done it again. Or just the number system. <laughs> because we have that number. We have that number system in Europe and no, no one knew where Nashville was. Somehow Nashville's taking credit for I, counting to seven. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> cool. Yeah. So what you will notice is that a professional guitarist will never play with a capo. Yeah, totally. Right. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what Nashville number system, just like Sean showed you a chord scale, let's say from G. Translate that into numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And when you communicate with other musicians, you can say one, four, five. You can say one, six, two, five, rumba. You can say uh, one, three, six in the key of A. Party in the USA. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I knew you were going to go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this number system will help you to organize the ideas. And when you're learning songs and interacting and playing with other musicians, it'll, it'll, it'll make the life of everyone so much easier because everything becomes a, like a mathematical formula that you can unlock regardless of any key. And then you can, especially if you're trying to sing and play chords and maybe learn a song, it'll be incredibly easier to transpose it to any key as opposed to trying to understand the relationship between F sharp and D flat. You'll mm -hmm. just know what that one is one and four is four. And then you can just place it where it's comfortable for you to solo, where it's comfortable for you to sing. It, it's Nashville number system and every chord is a number. Totally. I used it in this video. You're playing with or without you, and you too, mm -hmm. on a C chord. That I think that song's actually in the key of D. One, You're five, playing... six, four. That's it, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I, did, I don't know how to play that in C, but I know it's a one, five, six, four. One, five, six, four. So in C, boom, C, G, A minor, F. Done. Boom. Done. There it is. I think we hit him with the prime number. I think that's it. I think we're at prime. These are the tips that a lot of people won't tell you about. Mm -mm. The, this information does not usually leave the guild. No. Usually you have to pay prime money <laughs> yeah. to even access such knowledge. To get a guild member to turn coat? Dude. No, but we are kind of already on the outs anyway. Yeah, we're the rebels. Yeah. The uh, renegades. Mm, don't tell them. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> we got to get back in there. I've got unfinished business in that guild. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this is helpful to you. Let us know in the comments any additional secrets you would like to have revealed. That's right. And check out the description down below our course that is 40% off oh, right now. Oh, it's amazing. What a deal. How to solo in the guitar oh. like a pro. And if you haven't checked out my man's channel, you have to because it's the greatest YouTube channel of all time, I would say. Number one ever. 
Thanks for stopping by, everybody.